What should we expect from Tiger Woods heading into another Masters? And is everyone going to play nice as live golfers are back at a major championship? Hey, everyone. Welcome into another edition of On Tour with John McCarthy, presented by Callaway. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun National Golf writer John McCarthy, who joins us from lovely Augusta, Georgia, getting set for another Masters. They see you've got uh, your... Uh, sitting up in a nice little fancy room here, getting ready for this uh, interview, John. And it's always a fancy time of year for golf fans and for the golfers themselves as everybody's excited for the Masters. And Tiger Woods had to make his 26th appearance. The five-time champion, of course, has been trying to work his way back to playing full-time, uh, somewhat full-time, I guess, not a full schedule, of course. But I know you were out on the course today walking with the greats. How did he look and what do you, should we expect from him this week? Yeah, hi, Rob. First of all, there's nothing but fancy rooms here at, at Augusta National. And yeah, I was out uh, following Tiger today during his practice round. He played the back nine. Um, he played on Sunday. He sort of showed up with uh, some wedges and putter and played the front nine. But he played the back nine in, in full with a you know, full set of clubs. And he, you know, he didn't look didn't look great. His game didn't look that sharp. But uh, he was hitting multiple balls off the tee. Um, he would have done so anyways, but oftentimes that first one was going left or right. Um, so there's a lot of rust in the game, but that's what you would expect because he he hasn't finished an official PGA Tour tournament in over a year. Uh, last year's Masters, he withdrew, and then he didn't play another official PGA Tour event until this year's Genesis Invitational in February. And again, he withdrew from that um, midway through the tournament. So it's been over a year since he's completed a tournament. Um, but out there today, you know, you wouldn't know that he's the 959th ranked player in the world by judging by the the patrons and watching him uh, at Augusta because he was it was 15, 20 people deep at every tee, every green, obviously just trying to get a glimpse of, you know, of the great. Um, so he's walking with the, you know, the limp is there. It's real. It's there on a Monday. So if he's limping on a Monday, who knows what he's going to be doing on a Thursday and uh, through to a Sunday. Um his his putting looked good. His wedge game again. He was still working uh, working on the chipping and not too not too thrilled with some of the results. But then you could see some glimpses of the hands that are you know the hands are definitely there. It's more a matter of the full swing and the, and the walking gait. Um, but the fans still love to see Tiger Woods. Uh, it's the forecast is going to be warm all week, which is a good sign for him. The course is in immaculate condition. Um, I've been here you know for over a decade and it's it's as nice as I've seen it. You can tell they've had a great early growing season. It's in tip top shape. Uh, there is uh, some heavy rain scheduled for Thursday to soak the course, but the t after that, it looks like it's going to be sun through the weekend and it's in the high 20s all week. So that's good for Tiger because, you know, his, all his assorted uh, nuts and bolts in his body don't like the cold weather. So we'll see with Tiger. The fans are still out to see him, obviously. And it's uh, if he's going to have any chance of competing at any place, it's probably going to be the Masters um, because he's so familiar with everything around here. But it's a long way from happening from uh, what I saw on Monday. Now, it is the first time in nine months that all of the best players in the world are competing at a major championship with the live golfers returning. How do you think the dynamic will be with everyone back on the same course? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's what the golf world's been waiting for. I think the longer the two sides are apart, the more uh, we're seeing what a separated golf world, a fractured golf world looks like. And all around the course, you see the leaderboard from last year. And last year's leaderboard has John Rahm winning the tournament, Brooks Kepka and Phil Mickelson tied for second, and Patrick Reed, you know, in, in a group of three tied for four. So you've got live golfers all over the top of last year's leaderboard. And then you look at the PGA Tour this year, and, and their top stars aren't getting it done. Rory doesn't have a win. Jordan Spieth doesn't have a win. Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, Patrick Cantley, Victor Hovland, none of them have a win this season. So I really think that the, the stars on the PGA Tour um, desperately want to make sure they don't have a repeat of last year where live golfers dominate the leaderboard. And I think the live golfers really want to show what, uh, what the golf world's missing by having them sort of out on an island and playing there. So it's a big week for uh, the world of golf because the longer this lasts, the more you sort of see the need for some sort of reconciliation. Um, whether that's in the cards is anyone's guess still at this point, and it's often something they don't talk too much about at the Masters. But if anything, the majors, especially the Masters, are even bigger than they've ever been.
Well, it's setting up to be an exciting week. A lot of interesting storylines already here on a Monday. As always, you can find John's Masters coverage over at the Toronto Sun.